Tej, Tammy, Norma and the South Pacific Cyclone all active on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for October 22nd. So an extremely busy tropical scene right now with four cyclones spanning the globe, almost equidistant from each other actually, uh, makes it 71 storms so far this year on the calendar. Of course the strongest one right now is Cyclone Tej. However all systems have threats in their own right. Uh, Hurricane Tammy is moving through the Leeward Islands very close to Antigua and Barbuda right now. Uh, with hurricane force conditions possible along those islands and that is the seventh hurricane of this year so far in this basin in the eastern pacific norma is weakening rapidly but is still a category one hurricane just along the coast of the southern tip of the baja california peninsula and we've still got a 60 percent chance from the other area of interest which is going to be a slow burner as it heads towards the coast of mexico in the Western Pacific, there's nothing to report right now, no areas of interest, so we're stuck at a meagre 15 tropical storms for the basin. And in the North Indian Ocean, there is a 90% chance in the Bay of Bengal for this next system that we're looking at very closely over there. And of course, we've got Cyclone Tej, which rapidly intensified earlier today and is now a pretty powerful Category 3 storm and the strongest worldwide at the moment just off the coast, not too far from the island of Socotra in Somalia. Cyclone 1P is also a tropical storm by most estimates, and it's still not been named by Fiji at this point, but I expect that will happen fairly soon. It's trawling very close now to Vanuatu and could become a significant risk for those islands. Well, first of all, let's get a close-up on Norma. It is just 27 kilometers from Cabo Pulmo on the eastern coast of that southern tip of the Baja California Peninsula, 85 from Cabo San Lucas, 144 from La Paz, 246 from Culiacan, and 285 from Mazatlan. Hurricane warning in effect for part of that southern tip of the Baja California Peninsula with tropical storm warnings extending uh, further away. And of course we are expecting tropical storm conditions on the main uh, peninsula of Mexico as well. Well here's Tammy, hurricane warnings in effect for a lot of those leeward islands as shown at the bottom. It's just 42 kilometers from Barbuda, 47 from Antigua, 135 from St Kitts, 189 from St Martin and 339 from the Virgin Islands. The storm warnings extend as far as uh, Saba and St Eustatius there and a tropical storm watch is in effect for the British Virgin Islands to the west of the storm. It is moving gradually towards the north-northwest and so there shouldn't be any other locations implicated in the Lesser Antilles. Here's Cyclone Tej right now getting pretty close to Socotra, 163 kilometers, 379 from Ad Al Khuri just to the west of there. 6.03 from Salalah in Oman, which we're concerned about, 6.25 from Al Qaeda in Yemen, and 8.92 from Dukiam further to the east along the coast of Oman. A powerful storm, probably 115 mile per hour winds, that could be conservative, but it has displayed a pretty fearsome eye in the last few hours, although the last few frames showed it just uh, losing itself just a little bit. Well, here's the satellite imagery showing what Tammy's looking like right now, and it's always been a very compact system, even more so right now. You can see it there parading just along the coast there, just east of Barbuda, very close to reaching land, but it looks like the storm will avoid a landfall, and then it will continue to move off towards a further northerly route. Uh, but right now, there it is, so not much to it, but in the center of that, there are strong winds, of course, into hurricane force, at least 80 miles per hour. Now, this is Norma, uh, a much different kind of system, extremely large in comparison there, uh, but not much convection blowing up in that anymore. It's being torn apart, not only by wind shear, but land interaction as well, I would suspect. The southern side is almost completely bare at this point, but the northern side still churning out a bit more convection. This storm is very much on its way out, it's quite clear to see. 
and this is Tej getting pretty close to uh, the island there and you can see how it's been progressing in those frames quite difficult to see with just the two enhancements that we've got right now uh, but it does look like the eye has disappeared just a little bit again in those more recent frames on that satellite imagery and finally this is Cyclone 1P you can see the uh, Solomon Islands to its west and Vanuatu to its southwest uh, and it's getting itself together um, still uh, not a huge amount of structure there but uh, certainly some good banding with very high amounts of convection sea surface temperatures in the eastern pacific well they're not a problem for norma it's different things that are causing that uh, to weaken over 30 degrees celsius actually in the gulf of california in the atlantic also looking very good still in the caribbean and near where uh, norma not norma i knew i was going to make a mistake at some point tammy is right now around 28 to 30 degrees celsius that will continue for another day or two over there and still very warm waters extending out over the open atlantic but noticeably cooler along the u.s coast lines now western pacific similar story along the coast of china really cooling down the philippine sea still staying very warm over 30 degrees in a large area but no storms to take advantage of that at the moment so let's take a look at the indian ocean the arabian sea uh, still fairly decent there especially where tej is right now it's quite low latitude uh, around 28 29 degrees celsius that will continue all the way up into its landfall bay of bengal even warmer for that other system 30 degrees plus southwest indian ocean really getting warm now off the west coast of madagascar and a little bit to the east as well in the australian region those waters really warming up from western australia through the gulf of carpentaria South Pacific, where this system is right now, still very warm temperatures there too, 28 to 30 degrees, that will fall below the 26 degree isotherm when it passes south of Vanuatu. Compared to average, the Western Pacific is quite a bit above, so is the North Indian Ocean, South uh, Pacific there is near average, the Eastern Pacific is generally above average apart from two cool slots there, and the Atlantic is pretty much above average as well, especially in the lower latitudes, not quite as much in the subtropical zones. But overall, very warm across the globe right now in sea surface temperatures and an El Nino developing quite clearly there in the Eastern Pacific. Oceanic heat content is still sky high in large parts of the Caribbean Sea, although it's waning a little bit. That still extends a little bit there into the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands. The Eastern Pacific's oceanic heat content has really struggled now after the passage of uh, Norma. So not much of it left there. Western Pacific still looking decent, especially in the Philippine Sea. So let's let's see what the GFS model has in mind then. So it takes Tami off towards the northwest and then pitches it a little bit further towards the east there, reaching hurricane strength again if it happened to lose it. I think the GFS uh, starts that a little bit low and then swirling off towards the west eventually, uh, quite undecided about its track, whether it ends up getting lifted by a front or whether it misses it and then it, uh, you know, starts to turn back towards the west and becomes a much larger system there but less organized norma gfs predicts a rebound there uh, strengthening a little bit before making its final landfall along the western coast of the main part of mexico and uh, moving inland and dissipating very quickly uh, i think that's going to be more of a rain threat at this point we could still be seeing some really substantial rainfall amounts for the baja california peninsula and for sinaloa as well so significant impacts there i would expect for rain but of course the winds are there too north indian ocean you can clearly see tej there moving on towards the coast of oman and it does get there uh, it weakens very quickly as it reaches the coast but it is near the highly populated city of salala um, so it could cause some significant issues there as we get a zoom in you also saw that other one in the bay of bengal gfs has that developing into a weak tropical storm other models have a little bit of a brighter future for it cmc most notably but gfs has its remnants dying off just off the coast of Myanmar. Finally 1P uh, developing very quickly, fairly quickly and it becomes a substantial cyclone there getting probably to category 2 status on the GFS model before moving through the western part of Vanuatu now. Which is interesting earlier models had it, earlier runs had it on the eastern side but now the track takes it further towards the west so more substantial winds there and it's very early in the season so I hope people are prepared for that down there in Vanuatu. 
and we're also looking at the rain factor on this particular storm as well we could have shown you any of them really i just want to point out that we are still expecting possibly 30 inches of rain in oman along the coast but let's take a look at this one as well 1p over vanuatu where we are looking at substantial rainfall amounts here as well reaching possibly 24 inches on some of those islands and that is 600 millimeters and on some of the more southerly islands where the capital port villa is uh, we could be looking at eight inches there as well uh, that is 200 millimeters and some uh, smaller amounts in New Caledonia and possibly for the Solomon Islands and maybe even Western Fiji as well indirectly from this storm. Well let's take a look at the longer range day 5 through 10 and this is the continuation of Tammy there it is moving on towards the west I would say this is a low confidence forecast I mean a very large system possibly not fully tropical by this point and then it just starts to die off and then uh, saunters off towards the southwest and what's left of it just about makes it to the Bahamas although it doesn't look like there's really much of a storm left by that point interesting track though if that actually does materialize um, certainly not what you would normally see Eastern Pacific, we're still looking at this 60% chance, finally does form after the five day period and there it goes, uh, pretty much paralleling the coast of Mexico and eventually getting a little bit too close and dying off offshore thanks to I assume the mountain interaction there when it moves close to the shore but uh, possibly another borderline hurricane there and tropical storm impacts on shore uh, around about the 29th 30th of October. And looking at the longer range for 1P, well, it doesn't really regenerate that much, but it does become part of a much larger extra tropical system there that will deliver gale force winds to the North Island of New Zealand as we get towards the turn of the month. Uh, but the storm in and of itself looks like it's a straightforward dying out phase there before it gets completely consumed by that larger system. Well, that was a lot to go through in the short and medium range, but you can visit the Force 13 merch store by scanning the barcode and that will take you straight through to all of our items as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request. You can also take a look at our Still Waiting for Hone t-shirts because it doesn't look like they'll be getting ob obsolete anytime soon. So in the silly range you can still see what's left of Tammy actually pulling into the Miami-Dade area and then dead I think we think uh, and then possibly uh, in the long range here another system there in the in the Western Caribbean uh, that could develop there and move on towards the Yucatan Peninsula uh, that's quite a pretty normal late season track but certainly a system that's in the Western Caribbean would obviously uh, raise eyebrows given how much energy is still there and it's been untapped all year so that's something to be considered that is super long range in the Western Pacific, we're also looking out for another system with what I would describe as a very odd track, and I highly doubt this situation will occur, but there's a storm forming off the east coast of Vietnam, moving up towards Hainan Island, and then turning right, uh, and then off somewhere into the South China Sea, uh, which is definitely a very unusual track. Usually you would see, if, if a storm's lacking steering it would be further northeast in the south china sea and earlier in the season and usually later season systems would go straight into vietnam just move westwards you can talk about all of this though on our discord server discord.gg slash force 13 for tropical weather and general weather chat with thousands of members from all around the world i'm losing my tongue it's been so busy tonight well, on this day, we had a very busy period as well, with the uh, staple of it being uh, Cyclone Geary, which was about to make a Category 4 landfall, a powerful one, along the coast of Myanmar, a very destructive storm. We also had what was another very destructive storm in its late stages, Typhoon Meggy, which was a Category 1 by this point and about to reach China after making its extraordinary Category 5 landfall in the Philippines the previous week. We also had Trop Tropical Depression 17W to the east and Tropical Storm Richard had formed in the Atlantic as well, not to forget that one in the Western Caribbean. Back to today and 
You can scarcely believe that we're two names from the end of the Atlantic hurricane season. The next name is Vince. In the Eastern Pacific, it will be Otis. And in the Central Pacific, we are still waiting for Hone. In the Western Pacific, the next name now is Jellawat. And in the North Indian Ocean, it will be Hamoon. 71 storms so far in 2023, which means we're now only 21 away from the seasonal average. I think we'll still fall a little bit short, but we'll get fairly close. Australian region, the next name is Jasper. Southwest Indian Ocean is Alvaro. And for now, in the South Pacific, the next name is still Lola. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.